scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard, uh -huh, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with, number one, the knowledge of his will. Number two, all wisdom hold on don't rush all wisdom not wisdom all wisdom that means that wisdom is dimensional there are different dimensions of wisdom divine direction is a dimension of wisdom divine strategy is a dimension of wisdom you can have certain dimensions what he prays that you have all wisdom and then number three spiritual understanding this is the apostle praying for the church in Colosse that they be filled with all of these dimensions because he knew that being filled with these dimensions they will now be able to rise in experience to the fullness of the measure of the stature of the Christ hallelujah praise the Lord so I'll just share with us a few things and then we'll pray am I boring you praise the Lord Acts chapter 26. Let's start from verse 22. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 26. Verse 22. I'd like us to read and stop at the word day. Ready? One, two, read please. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. Men do not continue just because they want to continue it's one thing to start but there is a grace to continue remember we are preparing for the remaining part of the year it says having therefore please keep that scripture having therefore obtained help of god i continue unto this day that means if you see me standing after 20 years something kept me and he revealed that having therefore obtained help from God not I start I continue it's very easy to start it takes a desire it takes a little aggression to life and there you go when you see people start marathon many of you have watched people in a marathon as soon as the whistle goes you see a, a crowd of people sometimes about the size of this place i mean everyone some know already they will not finish they are aware are we together at least they should be rewarded for having the courage to start they know they are aware they have convinced themselves they did not intend to even go far but then you find certain quiet people skinny looking people determined with a resolve and then after a few minutes or hours, a separation begins from falling to collapsing to giving up. And then some people seem to be unperturbed by this reality that should happen to every man. Every man with flesh and blood should be tired somewhere. And there comes this one, two or three guys. They continue moving. You greet them, they don't answer, they turn, they keep running. I mean, they run until they get to the finish line and they stand as if they didn't run. Same men, same situation, same biological composition. 
and yet some obtain the power. Am, am I blessing you? Yes. January is one of the most ambitious year in Niger months in Nigeria. It's full of anger from the failed year, and people come with. I mean, and during the prayer and fasting, you know, most churches do that, and people take this vendetta over life, and there are all kinds of resolution. I must make it. Things must change. I'm tired of my finances. I must get a job. I must grow in ministry, etc., etc. And sometimes, as early as March, many people just say, "December, come, come fast." Having obtained help from God, I continue until this day. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40. We'll start from verse 28. It says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the maker of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is he weary. Now, when the Bible begins to talk about this, it's because he's contrasting God to something, a man that is about to reveal something about. Are we together? So the Bible says that God does not faint and then God cannot be weary and that there is an understanding in him that makes that possible. There is no searching of his understanding. Next verse, please. 29 says, he giveth power to the faint. And then to them that have no might, he increased strength. The next, verse, the next verse, verse 30, it tells you something that happens to all men. How many men? It says even the youth. Remember the Bible says the glory of the youth is in their strength. So it says even the youth shall faint, not may faint. And be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. That means by human strength, one day, this reality will catch up with you. It has nothing to do with backsliding. It has nothing to do with not being a Christian. It's a reality that is enshrined in this frail nature of men. Next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord. That means not everybody is interested in waiting. But for as many who will choose this strategy... To wait upon the Lord. A number of things will begin to happen to them. Number one, renewal. Not just renewal of their mind. Renewal of their strength. Strength can be renewed. And then he says that they shall mount up with wings as the eagles. They shall run. My God, look at this. And not be weary. Do you know what this means? That means that when I start my journey in life. Please watch. It is, it is expected that at a point I should be tired. Is that true? I should be weary. I should faint. This is the law that governs men. But that there is a system in the spirit I can tap into pastor. That when others are failing, I will run and not faint. I will not be weary. Please keep that scripture for us. I will walk and I will not faint. That means that not all men faint. Not all men are weary. All men should faint. All men should be weary. Except that if you tap into a system in the kingdom, you will run and not be weary. You will not faint. Are we together now? He gives power to the faint. That means if you come to God and say, Lord, I'm fainting. He does not give you an advice. He knows what is wrong. Lack of strength, lack of power was what caused the fainting in the first place. If you ask me to lift these or a number of heavy gadgets, it is because of the limitation of the strength to lift it that will create fainting. I will not faint lifting a handkerchief, no matter how many times. Why? Because I sustain enough strength to lift it. So when God sees you fainting, your fainting is a message to him. Lord, no human, including me, can lift this by my strength. So he answers you by giving you power. 
he supplies something to your life so that what you could not lift yesterday after a conference like this you will lift it by an agency that men will say no this is not human and you say this is this is me plus another dynamic It was not normal for Samson to kill the Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Except that when the hand of the Lord came upon him. Even the chains that was on him. The Bible says they were like wax before the fire. Are we together? The power of God is threefold. Please let's, let's just pay attention to understand. Number one. There is the manifestation of God's power that is manifested on the strength of relationship. That means that the power is a derivative of your relationship with him. A dimension of his power comes from your relationship with him. Number two. There is a dimension of his power that is a derivative of understanding his laws. Please say after me, laws. Say principles. Say laws again. Say principles. So the second dimension of his power is routed through an understanding of his principles. You don't need a relationship with him to access that dimension of his power. It is still his power, but you can ignore him and still route that. Are we together? The third dimension of his power can be accessed when you come under a man who has a covenant with God. So that possibility will be activated in your life not by any making of your own. You are a derivative of the business a man had with God. God calls Abraham, didn't call Lot, and Lot went with him. So whatever happened to Abraham happened to Lot. And it Lot forgot that he was where he was, not because he understood anything. When he left Abraham, he went down till he got to Sodom. So there are things that God does for the sake of other people, not your sake. When you, you, you find yourself under that grace, there are many people before they knew anything about tithing and giving, they started getting blessed. They could not explain why. This is the third dimension. They, come under a, they came under a grace, for instance, that commanded favor in strange ways. And although their knowledge was unfruitful in that area, they started experiencing strange favor. It was later on while they were teaching, they said, ah, these are the kinds of people that say there's no need to learn anything. Because whether they learn or not, their results don't seem to change. They just seem to go up. And they don't know what technology is responsible for their rising. Mm. Are we together? Yes. But now I want to focus on number two. Because that's the one that largely controls your individual success. Your relationship with God is very important. But many of us have not truly understood the laws of the kingdom that were built to produce the kinds of results that we desire. There is a name that God is called that I want to introduce. He's called the God of systems. That means that he operates through systems. In the Bible, you would hardly find God do anything twice the same way. The pattern of his operation is that when he comes to do a thing once, he creates a model of it and then a system within it. Are we together? So that by accessing the system, you can reproduce the results again and again and again. Please say the God of systems. So he only had to create and make man and woman once and put within that technology a system. Are we together? Yes. That means that you, you do not need to pray and fast as a woman to be pregnant or as a man to get your wife pregnant. 
If that does not happen, someone is interrupting a system because the system was designed to work. Are we together now? That's the reason why it calls for God's attention because God says, who is violating a system? I designed a system that a man and a woman should be able to have children effortlessly. What is corrupting the system? That's why it calls for prayer. That's why it calls for attention. Growth. When you have your child and after two, three, four years, that child is not growing. is an aberration to the system because growth is something that was programmed in God's system. Are we together now? Success is also systemic. That means that there are a combination of laws that if diligently adhered to, regardless of the background and regardless of the prevailing circumstances, you will be able to step into your predestined place. And this is where I'm praying that God will shift us in experience. That we'll stop seeing things only in visions and dreams. But that our visions and dreams will find expression. We will walk in the experience. The end of faith is a manifestation. That you obtain it. Are we together? Systems. When I found this dimension of God, it gave me rest. It brought predictability to my life. Are we together now? God designed systems as a proof that he is just. So there's no bias. That means that he leaves us to determine the cause of our destinies and the extent to which we can go far. If I fail in life and if you fail in life, God is not to be blamed. The problem usually will be a thorough understanding of the systems of the kingdom. And let me tell you this, please. Precious people of God. You may have heard me say it in different platforms again and again. That when it comes to the knowledge of God and our spiritual growth, there is no end to how much we can know about God. Even in heaven. We will continue to come up hither, come up hither, as we see dimensions of him unfold. But as far as our victory and dominion in the earth is concerned, there is an exact body of knowledge allocated for our victory. Like a curriculum, you can exhaust it and know I've held the keys. Away with that idea that the things you have to learn to succeed are infinite. It's not true. There is an exact body of truth that you can hold on to and tame life like an animal. Praise the Lord. The reason why many believers fail is because we have this illusion that there are infinite laws to learn and you are wondering at what point will I exhaust it? God would not be that heartless. There is an exact body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints and that it is possible that a man can hold the keys with all humility now, you look at the life of a student in school, learning does not stop, but the curriculum to graduate him is finite. He can finish it and a certificate is given to him. Now, you continue to learn, but as far as that body of knowledge is concerned, you've been accredited. This is how it is with life. You can hold on the keys and step out with boldness. And stand and look at the mountain of finances and it goes down. And your influence multiplies. And the Lord continues to bless you. And like Abraham, you are old and well stricken in age and God would have blessed you in all things. How many things? All things. I love your pastor. I read, I read a little about the church and immediately I got connected to the passion for all-round excellence. To be able to provide balance and victory in every area. I told myself I will never lead a people who are spiritually sound and then will continue to fail in every other area of their lives. And then at the same time, I would not lead a people who are ambitious and will prosper only in the earth realm at the expense of the salvation of their souls. You don't have to choose any. You can take all. Are we together now? It's very important. So God is a God of systems. 
That's a revelation that we must get. The systemic nature of his operation can make your life predictable. That means regardless of background, when you know what God has allocated. See, let me tell you this, my, my precious people of God. Creation has truly never been disobedient. It was only designed to respect laws. That means that every time we act not in accordance to the laws prescribed, their refusal is a message to us that you are sending something wrong to us. Are we together now? Yes. There are people, for instance, who have been born and bred in this city and have never had the opportunity to be blessed and to prosper. And yet there are others who, as at last year, there was no hope for them. But then they stumbled across these laws and today they stand to glorify the name of the Lord with evidences that prove that creation is still obedient. Are we together? If I desire sustainable growth, if I desire increase, oh, I forgot to tell you that the only kind of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every kind of growth is engineered is primed you don't grow intellectually by default you don't grow spiritually by default a foolish man continues to grow biologically a wise man continues to grow biologically are we together now yes he only turns from a foolish child to a foolish adult but the growth still happens or a wise child to a wise adult the growth still happens but when it has to do with growth in every other area of your life it is based on the understanding understanding is a miracle that we must desire one of the greatest miracles that's why when jesus saw mad men he was touched by their situation because in my opinion the worst situation that can happen to a man is madness there are people today blind who are doing great things there are people without limbs who are doing great things but i'm not aware of any madman madness is a real issue when jesus saw it he didn't let it go the madman in gadara had potential to bring 10 cities to jesus and one plague over his mind and he kept that man forever the miracle of understanding is a real miracle the bible says then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture next time you are listing all the miracles in the bible leave the issue of bread leave the issue of wine Go to understanding. You are truly, truly blessed and lifted when you have understanding. Let me share just one or two keys and then we'll pray and then we can continue tomorrow. Is the Lord blessing you? Understanding. Amen and amen. Psalm 18. We'll read 28 and 29. Psalm 18. Jesus, we bless you. It's projected. Please let's read together. One to read. For thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. As a result, 29. For by thee I have run through a troop. And by my God I have leaped over a wall. The problem is not the troop. The problem is not the wall. It says that you will light my candle. Was it not Job that showed us the secrets of his exploits? He said in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, then he began to list all the exploits that happened on account of that. Spiritual illumination is real power. Remember the Bible says he gives power to the faint. I want you to know how the power comes. Because for many people when we think power, we just think power, fall down, stand up. That's wonderful. But that light in the kingdom is true power. Spiritual illumination is power. That when God supplies a miracle of information in your understanding, it can take you from where you are. And take you to a dimension you never thought possible. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, 
for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Circumstances keep you until light comes to bail you out. Light is powerful. You switch off the light in this entire place and it becomes dark, surprisingly dark. But you introduce that light and things begin to change. Let me tell you this. You know the area of darkness in your life by the difficulty that surrounds that area. Light was designed to bring ease because whoever has light does not stumble. Stumbling is a proof of darkness. When there is difficulty in ministry, something is wrong. When there is difficulty in finances, something is wrong. When there is difficulty in your influence, your business, whatever it is. Now, it takes a lot of meekness to admit it. Especially if you have results in other areas. It's usually easier if you, are, you completely fail in every area. But once you have some results. The Bible says there was a man, a captain of the Syrian army. Naaman was called. A valiant man at war. But the Bible says, but he had light when it had to do with warfare. But when it had to do with his wholeness, there was something wrong. And one day, a slave girl decided to put this man's ego under pressure. Mr. Man, although you are a warrior, you are only a warrior in battle. And sorry, there is no fight. So now you will have to join the queue and learn what it takes to also succeed in the other areas you need. And when Elisha gave him an instruction, he said, what kind of embarrassment is this? There are other rivers. Don't, I mean, I'm a warrior here. The greatest enemy to your success is the last one you had. Failure is the key to success. Success is the key to failure. It is true. Mismanaged success is the key to failure. The fastest way to fail is to succeed and not understand the dynamics of maintaining it. Let me tell you this. As easy as being successful is, the easiest part of it is becoming it. Maintaining success is 10 times harder than getting successful. The dynamics in that realm is very complicated. You will need help. Haven't obtained help from God. I continue to this day. Light, light, exact light, spiritual illumination that is responsible for your victory. Are we together now? Please let me have three or four gentlemen. Any persons? Okay, let me use the guys. Please come stand here. Thank you. Now everyone, please watch. Let these guys represent the various areas of our lives where we are trusting God to come through. Let this, my brother here, represent your finances. Say finances, please. Ah, Nigerians. Say finances, oh. <laughs> Let this be your career, say. Are we together? Thank you. Let this be your spiritual life. Are we together? And then, let this be what? Health and wellness. Are we together? Now, watch this. In the economy of God, there is provision for you to excel in all of these areas. Are we together? But connecting you and any area is a light. I call it a mystery. Matthew 13 and verse 11. Jesus was speaking and he said, It has been given unto you to know, to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Not just to be aware that they are there, but to become one with them such that your life can prove their validity. Are we together now? So I want to excel financially and then I do whatever I was told to do and this thing does not answer. And it's amazing that while you are suffering another person is just rising as if the devil does not exist and you exhaust all your knowledge. You are stranded. You need light. Are we together? 
it takes a long time. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 encourages us to receive with meekness the engrafted word. You see, it takes meekness, humility, a recognition that learning is not a cause. You have to come to a point where you are not embarrassed by your ignorance. Be, be a learner. It's all right when I find out that I do not know because I can know. Growth is something that is a miracle in men. That means something I did not know yesterday, I can know tomorrow. And while you are laughing at the yesterday version of me, I have evolved to something else. I know that the yesterday version of me could not pay rent. Except that between yesterday and tomorrow, something happened to my today. I came for a conference and then the spirit of the living God through his word did something to my understanding and I can walk into tomorrow as though it was not the me of yesterday. Can the yesterday of you clap for the tomorrow of you and say, well done, you have changed. Or can he say, you look exactly like me. In fact, you are a mirror. That's a shame. When your tomorrow becomes like your yesterday, you are filled. I should be able to evolve so much that there should be such a gap between the yesterday version of me and tomorrow. And the bridge is light. The bridge is light. The mystery by which ordinary men can transit to become signs and wonders. Light. Not clothes. Light. Not phones. Light. Not laptops. Light. Not cars. Mm -mm. Are we together now? Now, I want to be very sincere with us. There's no point wasting our time. If I ask all of us to submit our requests now, our requests are a revelation largely of the areas of darkness in our lives. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's so. And we must be able to humble ourselves to say, Lord, I thank you for that which you have shown me. But my eyes need to see something else. To rise higher. I look at my life today and I'm, I'm surprised at the level of darkness that I used to operate in. Limited knowledge, constructed by culture, constructed by well-meaning believers who are mediocres. And I adopted those philosophies to my detriment. And when I saw by God's spirit that the future version of me would require a lot of evolution, I cried to God. I said, Lord, you have to do something. As you are sitting down right here, you are changing, you see. It's the truth. Let me tell you this. You never pursue success. Let me say it again. You never pursue success. It was not designed to be pursued. Whether success, money, whatever it is. You never, if you seek it, you will never. You don't pursue success. Every dimension, please look up. Life is dimensional. And in God's technology, he allocated possibilities for every dimension. That means that your life becomes a reflection of the possibilities that suit your dimension. The way you, you attract things is by evolving to a higher version of you. And then the possibilities that were allocated for that realm will come to you. Listen, you don't pursue success. They were designed with a code to find various versions of you. So every time they come, they reject you because the version of you that should keep them is not the one they find. Please listen to what I'm saying. Every result you want was already written for a version of you. Most of the results that come to your life find a lower version of you and they were not designed to honor it this is god's integrity so they continue to retreat sometimes you get them by force and they were designed to leave you this is the mystery behind good things leaving people it's not always demonic leaving you is proof that there is need for an upgrade it's amazing how what you used to look for tomorrow can come to you now because you have risen to the version that makes it happen There are people who desire growth and that growth happens by transformation. 
But most of them will not subscribe to the discipline of transformation. Yet the pressure, the ego, will compel them to continue to acquire things around their life. And then you find out that they continue to lose it. Are we together? It is true that your business can scale, but not by this version of you. Not by this version of your understanding. It is true that your ministry can be global, but not by this version of you. Not this level of anointing. No, this level of anointing cannot sponsor a global ministry. And so you will need like currency more of the same thing. 1,000 naira can buy a plate of food, not a car. So I hold 1,000 and Ote dollar holds billions and I convince myself that we are both holding money. Life will soon tell us that the amount matters. How God anointed Jesus. Not that he was anointed. Look at the extent. Is God speaking to us this afternoon? So I, I, I came here to really shake us and challenge us. What area in your life has refused to bow to the Lordship of Christ? That is the area you need to cry for light. There is a dimension of light. Lord, why do I come to seek favor? I've heard pastor talk about favor. I've seen people come into Lagos and within five months their lives change. I was born and bred in this city. Not me, not my father, not my mother. Nothing is changing. Favor is still real. Your experience is too small to prove otherwise. So when the dynamics of it comes to you, then you learn. And then suddenly, Lagos starts to respond to the version of you they have been waiting for. There is nothing that should come to you that is missing. Stop looking for it. Uh -uh. A code was programmed in it by God's intelligence to come to the version of you that calls it. Every dimension you rise to has a voice. It will call the possibilities that were sent to that dimension. Ask any great to humble ourselves and admit this. The, the investment and the sacrifice to build understanding and build mastery, it distinguishes you. Your pastor is where he is, not just because God called him. Let me tell you, the call of God is not the license to success. You can still fail. There were people in the Bible God did not call, they succeeded. <laughs> You go and read your Bible. Elisha, there was no prophecy about him. Elisha was a farmer. He was not a prophet. But he subscribed to the law of mentorship until he carried the mantle. And other people like Moses, your Moses, didn't enter the promised land. The call of God is not an automatic ticket for success. You, even if you see Jesus, you will still bend to the reality of the principles that make for success. When Jesus appeared to Saul, he said, I'm done. I recommend you back. Go and continue to learn. From there, he would go to the wilderness of Arabia for 18 years. Even Jesus, the word himself, went to the temple to learn about himself again. He went to learn Jesus the way. Is God helping us? So I look at my life and I love the Lord so much. But why is my family like this? Why is the ministry like this? I open a business and no one is coming. And I love God. Remember, as we say, I want to grow so that I will bless the house of God. Sincere desire, but not even the desire itself will automatically bring blessings. God is the God of systems. Please understand this. This is the name of God I want you to know and understand today. System. He came to listen to the prayer and the sacrifice of both Cain and Abel. Did you know that God attended to both of them unbiasedly? But at the end of it, one subscribed to a system, a pattern, and it was received. So God came. It looked like he did not come. If you did not hear of the episode of what happened from God's side, you would think God ignored one. But he came to see both. He was not looking for men. He was looking for patterns. When he found his pattern, he honored it immediately. The same way your prosperity is not looking for you, it's looking for obedience to patterns. And if you are the one who has it, it will look like it's coming to you. 
the systemic nature of life is very powerful when I learned this I told myself regardless of my background I'm grateful because I can find my way out imagine that I had to just depend on the emotions of men some of us will never rise but the God of heaven who programmed this system the same way you are sitting now forget about what is in your pocket or not in your pocket forget about who knows you or not if you pay attention and light takes you from your yesterday through your today into your tomorrow you will turn back and say my God I've heard people saying that you can change men but this is true and usually people will say you are lucky you you mean that church just changed you you just came and in two months you are changed no growth happens through understanding grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge through knowledge through knowledge exact understanding so I decided to compartmentalize my life into all the dimensions that I know would be required for my excelling and my living an impactful life and I started to pursue exact knowledge I don't just want to pursue random spiritual growth just reading the Bible anyhow you just open today and say Kai, I feel like reading Exodus now you are you are doing the same thing that a student does by hopping to any faculty at all and says no knowledge is a waste imagine that you hop to just anywhere and say after all I'm, I'm still learning yes you are learning but your knowledge is not guided and it's not specific so it cannot make any noticeable impact are we together There is one thing that you can know, please hear me, and never beg for bread again until Jesus comes. There is one thing you can know, and it will look as if there is a charm on men every time they see you. These are possibilities. Let God be true. And let every man, let every culture, let every background, let every situation, let every mountain be a liar. There is something your business can have and know and do. People of God, that what you see now that you call success will be what those you raise will be doing because you will scale to a height unimagined. Not peg yourself and plateau at a level and convince yourself this is all there is. No. I came to challenge you. It is the power of light. When you faint, it's proof that there is weakness somewhere. And much more than just an impartation, he sends light first. An impartation is useless. Remember, the oil assumes the shape of the container. If you turn the container this way, the oil will look like it's pouring. If you keep the container up, the oil will look secured. The oil is there with its potential, but the container controls what it does. When your capacity is small, impartation becomes almost unfruitful. That's why people fall down and stand up again and again and return back. Because your container was almost pouring. And as you were putting the oil, it still came out. But when God expands you, and then that grace comes on your life, it will be like the foxes of Samson. You will say, where is that challenge that brought shame to me yesterday? I'm not praying that you go. By you, I will leap over walls. And you look at it and greet your landlord and say, sir, thank you so much for driving me. I, would you be available for my Thanksgiving? Say, Thanksgiving of what? You gave birth to a child? Say, no, 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 I just finished my estate. In how many months? Five. He said, you are a thief. You, I'm not a thief. Light. Light is not a ladder. It's a lift. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you